Thank you. Thank you, Eric. What? Can I flip through this? Yeah. Okay. Shane wondered, I, I s s scattered some of these around the room. I just had 30 in a box. If somebody didn't get one, Dan Olson just walked in, and Brooke Vasquez, they're in the Conservation District office and the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and the, he's got bukus of these if you want a hard copy. What I'm going to do is just briefly touch on this and then get into some stuff that's now on the web that uh, you may be even more interested in, actually. But I started my career with the Soil Conservation Service, then it changed over to the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and worked for 31 years for that agency. And I started my career mapping soils as a soil scientist in North Carolina and then in Utah. And it was a very valuable experience and a great way to start as a natural resource professional just because everything we look at starts with the soil and geology and that's what provides you growth for plants, um, building material, construction types th of things. But what I really like about this publication that isn't on the web as you can see, you've got the first part. You can open up to a general soils map that is right in the beginning of all the aerial photography. And it, looking at it, it'll give you just kind of a real brief understanding of the Gunnison Basin. And this survey was done mainly for private land uh, within the Gunnison Basin. It takes into account all the way down to Lake City, up to Crested Butte. Uh, Cochito Park, but it covers mostly private lands and BLM. After you look at that, the way to use this next to the general soil survey map is another index to all the aerial photography in the back. And they're all numbered sheets, and you can pull those up and kind of find your location on the map and then dig into your property and come up with the soils information that resides on that property. Right in front of the general soil survey map is the soil descriptions. And they're all in alphabetical order, but there's pages you can go to the descriptions. And this is what I really like this publication for, is the soil descriptions within this publication, being an older soil scientist, really are something I like more than what we get online um, at this point. But there's a lot of information right in front of the um, soil series information. There's a glossary, and then there's some climate data. Just gives you kind of a brief overview of the climate in Gunnison. And then you can dig into all the soils descriptions, capability classes, um, the different uses that you would look at for soils in the, in the valley. And these publications should be all across the United States. And that's what we're going to look at now. See if I can. Make sure I talk loud enough and everybody hear me okay? So what I did is this web soil survey, this made my life in the field office just amazingly more or less complicated. We used to, when we'd get a request from developers, the county, We'd have to take these publications. We had lots of maps in the office. We'd cut them up. We'd cut and paste and Xerox copy and put together a report. Now, you as an individual can go into, it's called Web Soil Survey. You can just Google and it comes up right away after I typed Web Soil. And this is essentially all this information, like I said, across the whole United States. 
is online. And you just click this button to start. And of course, you get the United States. So I did this once for some Boy Scouts who were in here from Oklahoma, and we picked one of their uh, homes, and we used the address, and we just developed a little report based on their property. But that's the way this can be used, is you can just plug in an address, and the map will zoom exactly to that address. You can go to the state and county, if you know the soil survey area, that gets a little bit big. Park Service, Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management, Section Township and Range, Lats and Longs, Hydrologic Units. There's a lot of ways to access, as well as if you just click on this Zoom In button, you can create a box and it'll just zoom in right to that location. But what I'd like to do is just <clears throat> kind of give you an idea of the information in here. And so it zooms to Gunnison County. Another way, if you know your soil survey area, and this is one of the interesting things you'll see is in addition to this Gunnison soil survey, putting my glasses on would help. There we go. You can go to the county. And then you can see everything that's listed. There's a Cochitopa, Grand Mesa West Elk, the Gunnison area, Ure area, Peonia, and Ridgeway are all soil survey products that encompass Gunnison County. That information is held here, but let me go ahead and I'm gonna just uh -huh. zoom in. Start to, this does work fast, Eric, good. And then you can, there's a lot of ways to get around. There's a hand, allows you to just pan into an area. You can see the city of Gunnison. If you want, you can zoom back out very easily. I'm going to go up Ohio Creek. And most of the map products here, I think, are dated. They're the most recent that NRCS has. So these are probably 2015 aerial photography. Let's just go up, say, close to Mill Creek. <coughs> and how you get started in here is this area of interest. And for people who've got the computer capability, you can actually, through geographic information system technology, you can add actual shape files that are created on your computer for a property, put those in, and it will create the area of interest for you directly from that. But not having that available to us, we're going to go up here and you can have, there's two different ways to enter the area of interest. Either a rectangle or you can draw a polygon. And the polygon allows you to actually kind of follow a property boundary just by every click, you put a point in, and you're going to create a polygon of, say, the property boundary. And you double click at the end, and that creates your area of interest. So then you can name this, and here it's saying we had multiple soil surveys. So we went outside the Gunnison Soil Survey area boundary, but it's picking up other map units. And it's showing us that we've got the Grand Mesa West Elk, 
and the Gunnison Soil Survey area. The area we picked is 4,432 acres. It gives you how many acres in each uh, soil survey area. And so now we head into the soil map. And it will create a soil map for you based on that boundary that you input. So one of the, the most interesting things I found, see the shopping cart says free? <laughs> In the beginning, it didn't say free, and nobody was utilizing it, and they finally had to tell people, it's free, there, there's no cost. So every time you develop something, you click here, add to shopping cart, and you can name all these specific items that go with your report. We won't at this point, but it, it gives you all the soils types then that you have in your survey. You can, um, <clears throat> by importing that into the shopping cart, we can look at and see what we have. And essentially here to begin with, we've just got the soil map and information related to the soil map, soil survey map. So let's look at some of the information available to you. Building site development. So you want to know dwellings with, without basements. And you can view the description. It's going to give you the actual description of what the, the rating is, or what the, um, well, yeah, the rating for this soil, but then if you view rating, it creates your report. And it tells you what is the rating, very limited. It could be based on slope, flooding, depth to saturation, shrink swell as a percent clay, um, all those kinds of things that engineers, architects need when um, providing you plans for, say, building a house. And again, you just add that to the shopping cart, and it goes in, and you're starting to build your report. Let's say military operations. It gives you uh, traffic ability for tanks and just depending on what you all want to do, uh, anywhere across the country. <laughs> Construction materials, a lot of that. Gravel sources, topsoil sources for roads and development. A lot of what we'd use in the office was mainly land classification, ecological site names, or what we used to call range site descriptions and it would give you the plant community that grows on your particular soils. Um, so if we view the rating for that. Again, each soil type has a vegetative type associated with it that'll grow on it. And they're all named. So you've got mountain meadow, subalpine loam. And some that don't are within irrigated land so that doesn't have a, an ecological site, maybe. Or it could be that it's forested, which is this grayish colored area up above. But there again, you would just, as you build a report, go up far enough, add to the shopping cart. Oops. Add to the shopping cart, not look at the shopping cart. And so you can pretty much go all throughout the United States, and if you're planning a move and you're looking to buy farmland or a house site or something, you can find all the information you need related to that that you can see if it's truly a reason to buy it depending on your goals or objectives for that property. Here again, there's uh, irrigated capability classes for the irrigated soils.
U rating. Getting ahead of myself. So you can see what they consider the irrigated soils and then their capability or rating. And then you can get descriptions for those added into your soil survey report that you're building. <coughs> soil health information, vegetative productivity. A lot of times we would use this for you know, we're looking at a dry year, so what is the range production going to be in an unfavorable year? And based on the ecological site descriptions, it's going to tell you the rating in pounds per acre per year production of that property. And again, give you some descriptions of the information there. You can look at specific soil properties. This is what for engineers and again, uh, architects. I mean, you've got all the specific chemical properties, soil erosion, uh, physical properties like available water holding capacity the percent sand, silt, and clays in your soils, water features, depth to flooding. Under the ecological site assessments, you can, there, there isn't information here specifically because they, some of these ecological sites haven't been transferred from the old range site to the new type. But if you go into soils reports, and you go to vegetative productivity, you can actually, if you click on range forest classification, I'm going to include minor soils because within each soil unit, there are what they call minor inclusions of soils. And what it's going to give you is for that soil type, it's going to give you the vegetative plant community underneath that type. So like Broad Canyon, which didn't have an ecological site description in the first reports, you can see why it's, it's a forested site, but here's the vegetation that you might find under that. And again, it gives you the production in favorable, unfavorable years and normal. But if you're trying to look at revegetation, uh, you get into the different types of range sites and then the different types of plant communities that exist on that site and location. And again, you can add these to your report. And I'm going to see how quickly this works. So we want everything, let's even throw in a glossary. And we'll hit check out. And what this is going to do, it's going to build a report similar to this, it's going to be your own little soil survey report for your property. And it's, like I said, it just changed what we did in the office. It made it so much simpler because we could, people could just go here immediately and pretty soon we just lost that whole part of our <laughs> workload that we had to do just because people had that information at their fingertips. I don't know how many times I'd go through this with people on the phone and this one older gentleman, he was trying to get it for his son and all he kept saying every time we looked at something was, wow, wow. Every time we turned a page or looked at something else, he was just really excited about it. Oh, I forgot to hit that button. And I know that's kind of a fast look at it. Uh, one of the things I did mention is minor inclusions within the soils. 
just to give you an understanding a little bit about soil survey and the process, when I mapped in uh, North Carolina, we were mapping on a very, I forget the classes they are or that we would map at, but we were at a level that I was mapping uh, the drainage classes and we were going through and do you have a blocker up? <coughs> Allow once. But we were mapping like feet, we were mapping drainage classes, well drained, somewhat poorly drained, poorly drained soils across the landscape. And it, um, it was a very intense survey and it was for um, a high developed area. When you move to the western United States, because of the scale of the landscape, it was an, oh, it's orders. So we were order three, I think, in this soil survey. And a lot of the reimbursable surveys that were paid for by the Forest Service, BLM, having our personnel do that, you were mapping what's called associations. So you'll see a lot of the soil types are two soils, the way it's mapped and how they were differentiated on the landscape is by aspect. Um, north and east facing slopes different from south and west facing slopes. A little drier component to the soil type. Uh, you can see where some of those, if we just look on um, right there in front where I told you the soil descriptions are, right in front of the general soil map, if you go down to something like Dufston Corpening Loams or Dufston Spring Creek Stony Loams, you see that you've got a mountain loam and a dry mountain loam, and that's the differentiation of moisture, basically, on the landscape. And they were mapping at very large scales um, on the landscape. So the one thing you have to do when you come out west you map a lot of what's called minor, or you include a lot of minor soil components within the larger map unit. And when you look at that map unit, you still have to go out on the ground and do a more detailed inventory of that spot just to see what your minor inclusions are because you can't just say, oh, that's this soil type wholly, and, you know, that's it. You have to go out there and kind of verify for yourself a little bit about what kind of soil type you might have at that location. Well, I guess that didn't come up, but one of the other options in the um, checkout is you can go to download later and you can enter your email address do you get your email on here, Eric? Do you want to? No, no. You don't? Okay. We've only got five minutes, but sometimes the publications are too big, too many pages. We might try the get now again and see if it'll come through. Um, but if you want, you can send it to your email address, so then it'll just download for you right there so you have access to it. Um, on your own computer. Like I said, I went through that pretty quickly. We've got a few minutes. If you have any quick questions that I can answer or cover a little bit more in depth. Oh, it's going to come up. How about that? So here's your soil survey report. Gives you your map of your area. And just like in the soil survey, a preface, table of contents. Soil map, map legends. So it, it's a wealth of information and, you know, a lot of people don't realize it's out there. And once you do, and if you're really working with the land at all, uh, this is a great tool at your um, fingertips to help you 
look at your land and evaluate it and come up with some thoughts or ideas about what you can do or can't do. Again, uh, dwellings without basements. I guess I didn't look to see. Oh, it's 136 pages, and that's hardly hitting any of the information um, on a piece of property. So you can get some very detailed reports out of this. John, how small can you go in? I mean, you're you can go. Can you, go to one or? you can go right down to an acre. Yeah, um, and it'll give you a report for like my one-acre lot at <coughs> Ohio Creek and. In any area you want to look around, it'll create a, the same kind of information or report based on what you want. Yeah, Shane. How is this, um, what if somebody wanted to know what your ground was, can anybody go do that? Or is there some safeguard on that? Or does it matter? Well, they don't know it's your ground. And, you know, and they might, you know, if it's a realtor or somebody looking at something. But the information is all out there. There isn't really anything, though, that I think would compromise. You know, it's not like uh, secure information in any manner. It's just what the land is and what's, what it's capable of doing or supporting that way. So you can look at anything on the landscape. You can use it for... I've sent a lot of people there who want to come to Gunnison elk hunting and they want to look at where to go and maps. Uh, some of the additional things I guess I didn't get into real quickly if we go back to soil map. There is a legend and you can choose what is on that legend and you can also choose to have it a topographical background versus an aerial background and so a lot of times people just look at topos easier than aerial photography um, me coming up in the soil survey realm I just always dealt with aerial photos and really like to have that to look at for my benefit um, you know, and after you live in this valley for 32 years, you get a feel for soil types and how they're, where they're located, a lot more clayier soils to the north, sandier soils to the south, granitic. Uh, there's so many neat ecosystems, differences within this basin that it's, it's been a fun place to work and do this kind of stuff with people. And, What's neat, I found out that Dan, who is now the district conservationist in the field office here, he uh, was a soil scientist too, so somebody who can take over these kind of presentations, Eric. <laughs> Instead of this old guy up here. <clears throat> all right, well that's all I had. So. And I didn't infringe on Robbie's presentation.